Hi there guys, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And with the current situation of the world, a lot of people are unable to go out and train martial arts with their instructor, which is leaving them to turn to DVDs, YouTube videos, and of course, books. And so in this video, I'm going to be counting down my top five books for learning martial arts from home. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before we get started, I do want to take the time to kind of acknowledge my own biases. I am a self-defense instructor as well as a Jeet Kune Do practitioner, and my choice in books definitely reflects that kind of worldview, that I'm going to focus a lot more on application than I am on just about anything else. But I will also say that there was a time period in my life in which I did not have access to legitimate martial arts. I started off training in a very traditional martial arts system, and then my parents moved, and there was a time period where I was effectively in a martial arts desert, where none of the martial arts schools around me were any good. They were all kind of belt factories or, or martial arts-themed daycares, and I wasn't very interested in those, so the only way that I could study martial arts was by getting books, because back then YouTube didn't exist. Ooh, exposed my age a little bit. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get into our number five. So coming in at the number five spot is a book that's very dear to me, and that is The Art of Throwing. This is a part of a much larger series, The Art of series. They have The Art of Striking, The Art of Pinning, I think, um, or Ground Fighting, The Art of Weapons. But what this book does, which is really interesting, is as opposed to showing one martial arts style, it is essentially a compilation of throwing techniques from a lot of different martial arts systems presented in a very non-biased way. So he doesn't take the time in this book to say this technique works better than that technique. It's more along of an encyclopedia of techniques for taking people down. And so this is a book that me and my friends spent, I mean, hundreds of hours pouring over. We take it outside into the grass and just go through techniques and try different ones and see which ones work best for us. This was a very interesting introduction into takedowns, but more importantly, this book just comes at everything from a very beginner mindset. One thing that makes this book really good is the fact that far before it teaches you how to do any throws, it takes the time to teach you how to stand, how to grip, and how to fall without hurting yourself. So it even goes through all the safety precautions needed for taking somebody down. This is an excellent book for somebody who's not done much takedown practice and is looking to get into studying that aspect of martial arts. Coming in at number four is possibly my personal favorite book for different reasons, and that is Jeet Kune Do A to Z by Chris Kent. Now, anybody who's watched my channel for a while has heard me talk about this book, because this is actually the first martial arts book that I remember getting. That is not why it is on this list, though. It is on this list because I have genuinely never come across a text that was better for beginners. This book really does an excellent job at not just teaching you how to punch, how to kick, how to use your footwork, um, how to do basic trapping, basic takedowns, but it also does a really good job at explaining the whys behind things. Um, you've heard of Teach a Man to Fish and you feed him uh, for a lifetime, right? Well, this is a book that teaches a man to fish. It's not just a collection of techniques. This book really goes into detail about how and why each technique is effective. And it even compares it to other methods or other styles of striking. So it will explain, this is why we punch this way. This is why we kick this way. And I think that's a really good place for a martial artist to start, is not only to learn how to punch, but to understand why they're punching that way, and more importantly, why they wouldn't punch some other way. Chris Kent is a phenomenal martial arts writer, and it is 
amazing how he is able to convey so much information in just a couple of sentences. Uh, this is definitely a must-have for anybody who is just getting into the martial arts world. This would probably be the notebook I would suggest for someone who is brand new to martial arts and wanted to get started. This is this is where you go. Chris Kent's Jeet Kune Do A to Z. Coming into our third place spot is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Self-Defense Techniques by Hoist and Charles Gracie. This is an outstanding book, especially to follow up to the Chris Kent book. What this book is, is effectively Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu applied to self-defense. It definitely takes the time to teach the fundamental basics. It teaches how to stand, where to put your hands, basic footwork, basic gripping, even throwing techniques and what have you. But what's really cool about this book is this is the application. So in the prior two books I suggested, The Art of Throwing, um, Jeet Kune Do A to Z, both of them are very much teaching the techniques of martial arts. Whereas what this book does is it takes those techniques and it applies them to self-defense. As you can see, I have this book um, marked all over. I have it highlighted and underlined. This is an excellent text for somebody who is a self-defense oriented martial artist and wants to learn some of the best self-defense techniques in the world. Coming into second place, which won't surprise anybody except for the fact that you probably thought it was going to be in the number one spot, is The Tao of Jeet Kune Do by Bruce Lee. This is widely considered to be the Bible of Jeet Kune Do. This is the text to which most people reference when talking about the philosophy of Bruce Lee. It is also a text that is on the bookshelf of almost every expert martial artist. It is very difficult to exist in the world of martial arts and not have come across this book and read it. This is an amazing look at the philosophy of martial arts. It is ultimately, though, an incomplete text. Bruce Lee had not completely finished writing it, so much of this book reads as more of a collection of thoughts than a coherent book all the way through. This is the kind of book that you do very well in just kind of like opening up in the middle and just reading a page and something will blow your mind. But having said that, the reason why it's not in the number one spot, despite the fact that it definitely is deserving of a number one spot on many martial arts books list is the fact that this book is definitely not a book for every martial artist. By that I mean this is not a book for the beginners. Most of the information in this book is only really relevant once you have studied martial arts for a while. If you are just learning how to throw a punch or you're just learning how to apply a choke, you don't need to understand the politics of traditional martial arts versus modern martial arts or how katas stagnate the development of a martial artist or any of the more, um, I guess, politicized aspects of Bruce Lee's philosophy. However, once you've done martial arts for, you know, six months or to a year, this book is going to be an eye-opener. And the most important thing about this book is it really helps you understand how to think like a high-level martial artist. No matter what, I hear the same words coming out of every expert martial artist's mouth that you will hear people say it's not about the art it's about the individual uh, about researching your own experience all of those kind of opinions are contained within this text undeniably when it comes to the philosophy of martial arts this book is a contender for the number one spot before we get to the number one spot, I do want to shout out three honorable mentions. One of the books I don't have on me because I lent it to a friend forever ago and I never got it back, and that is The Book of Five Rings by Mayumoto Musashi. That is an outstanding text on kind of the strategy and mental side of martial arts. It is a must-have on anyone's library, um, but much like the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, it is a book that the information would be completely lost on a brand new martial artist. Another one that's kind of similar in vain that I think is an excellent book, but maybe not for beginners, is Infinite Insights into Kempo by Ed Parker. Now, of course, the running joke with my students is it's awfully small for being infinite. <laughs> but uh, what I really like about this book is really the first half or first third of the book in which it goes into pretty deep detail into the history and development of not just Kenpo, but kind of martial arts in general. Um, it goes into a lot of detail, very nitty gritty, sometimes very dry detail about like how to um, 
analyze techniques using the clock method and what different symbols mean in different martial arts and what have you. Um, this is a, actually a much larger series. This is just volume one I have in my hand. Um, but it is, once again, just like um, Book of Five Rings, this book is definitely not a book that would be all that interesting to someone who just started martial arts. Um, this is definitely kind of a, a martial historian's kind of uh, goldmine. And the last honorable mention I have is a book that has nothing to do with martial arts except for everyone should have it. Boom. And that is Yoga for Regular Guys by Diamond Dallas Page of WCW and WWF fame. Um, the reason why I think this book should be in every martial artist library is because this is your um, bubble gum and duct tape. This is what this is. Uh, as you study martial arts, you will injure yourself a lot. And what is really cool about this book is it is a lighthearted, very easy to follow guide on how to take care of your body when it is injured. Um, yoga is one of the absolute best exercises you can do for physical therapy, for building yourself back up after an injury. And a lot of people are kind of shy away from it because um, they think it's for chicks or they think it's too feminine. And what's really cool about this is this book takes a much more humorous look at it, but still teaches you everything you need to know to take care of your body when it's injured. This is a great book. All right. What is my number one? Well, coming into the number one spot, boom is Bruce Lee's Fighting Method, the complete edition. This book starts you off with how to punch, how to kick, how to stand, and footwork. But it also goes into details that a lot of other martial arts books never take the time to dive into. It talks about how to take care of your body, weightlifting and stretching, and how to actually build up a martial arts physique. It also goes into proper sparring techniques and uh, discusses how do you practice against a live opponent without killing each other? All that is in here. This book also shows a comparative analysis of why Bruce Lee is doing the technique this way versus some other systems, as well as it takes the time to kind of show you some of the mistakes that people make in trying to throw a punch and where mistakes actually happen. And then the book is finally capped off, which really speaks to my heart, um, <laughs> with a, a big fat section on self-defense. This book was originally... Uh, released in several much smaller volumes, um, but the single volume edition is the ideal version to get it in. Uh, one, because it is printed in a much higher quality. Obviously, it's a hardback, whereas the originals were these kind of crappy, almost like pamphlet-like softbacks. Um, there's also a little bit more information in this book than were in the original publishing. This is in my number one spot because it is the most complete, that it really covers the full breadth of martial arts knowledge in one solid text. Whereas I don't ever feel like any one book has everything you need to know, this is the closest that I have found. So there you have it, guys. That is my top five books for studying martial arts from home. Do you agree with my selection? Have you come across books that uh, are maybe better than the ones I'm looking at that I need to uh, take a look at myself? If you uh, have any opinions on the subject, put it in the comment section down below. Now, of course, if you've made it this far in the video and you've not subscribed yet, what are you doing? You clearly enjoyed the video because you made it this far. So please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button and share me with your friends on whatever social media you like. And of course, if you live in my part of town, Indianapolis, and you'd like to come train with me, all the information to do so is in the description box down below or on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.